we're going to um, start with where Linda left off with the optional chest radiography. I'm going to go over what we're going to talk about real quick. Don't, don't write these down just yet, just to kind of keep your notes organized. But we're going to discuss uh, inspiration, expiration, PA chest, the AP supine or semi erect chest, lateral decubitus chest, and AP axial or lordotic chest. And then this we throw in just because you have to have it somewhere, and probably the best place since we're dealing with the airway is the lateral soft tissue of the neck. All right, so let's go with the inspiration, expiration, chest x-ray. All and most of the time when you do an inspiration, expiration, chest x-ray, you, you need to have a routine chest x-ray with it. And that means uh, doing uh, lateral as well. So first you're going to do a PA chest x-ray with inspiration. Second you're going to do a PA chest with expiration. What you're going to do is you're going to tell the patient to exhale and stop breathing. Have them blow their breath all the way out and hold it out. And if I go too fast, just slow me down. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Once you do the uh, inspiration and the expiration, you position them for a lateral. <coughs> left lateral chest. What's the done to RO? Rule out. Rule out. Oh. The, the main reason you do an inspiration and expiration chest x-ray is to rule out a pneumothorax. And, the, and I want you to put a little star next to this. pneumothorax is a collapsed lung <coughs> it has air in the pleural space I think they normally do this after the lung biopsies make sure yeah. they have to the lung they cannot see too much Anytime you have a lung biopsy or even a liver biopsy and a CT, they stick a long needle into whatever mass they're trying to uh, get a tissue sample from, and they want to do an inspiration expiration just to make sure they didn't puncture the lung by mistake. Most of the time, um, it says here, usually accompanied by routine chest, you do the inspiration, expiration, and then a left lateral chest x-ray. So it's like a, do a complete chest and then just add the expiration. So the lateral is going to inspiration and Exactly. And then here's an actual example of the inspiration, expiration. <coughs> and you can see, looking at the two here, Right here, you can count your 10 ribs. So that's definitely the inspiration. And then here's the expiration. I think you only see nine. This is an example of a pneumothorax. That little thing there is a bullet. So this person had a, a bad night, probably. Um, Right here, you see this line? That's the lung that's collapsed. It should be full out here. You don't see any lung markings right here. That line is the collapsed lung. And then here's the, the deflated lung. And then all this is air. Now right here on the bottom, you see how it's an, uh, a straight horizontal line here? That's fluid. Oh, no problem. Can you see it better? I can see fine. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Now this patient has what they call a hemopneumothorax. 
and it's uh, spelled the same, just add H-E-M-O in front of pneumothorax. And what that is is a collapsed lung with blood in the pleural space. Yeah, it's a collapsed lung with blood in the pleural space. I'll see where the fluid level is and everything. Okay. All right. <clears throat> AP, supine or semi erect chest. This is done if you have a patient that can't stand for, for whatever reason. If they're wobbly or you know, they're out of it. Sit them up in the stretcher or sometimes you have to do a supine. Now, you always want to try and do a chest either standing or semi-erect because it's the best way to see air fluid levels in the lungs and the pleural cavity. Can you see that one more time? Sure. You always want to do your chest, <coughs> if you can, either standing or semi-erect because it's the best way to see air fluid levels in the lungs and pleural cavity. So when you're in the site, you do a stretcher chest, don't always have to do a lateral. Some sites make you do a lateral when you do a stretcher chest AP, but it's not always required. Then portable chest x-rays. You want to ensure that the chin's elevated up out of the way of the apices. Have them look up. And you'll want to remove artifacts such as nasal cannula, tubing, the EKG lead, IV tubing. What you can do is just kind of move the, the tubes and the wires, put it over their shoulder behind the film. That way it's not in the uh, lung anatomy. Make sure that the tube is high enough to prevent a lordotic image. And in a minute, we're going to see a couple of examples of that. Here's a, an example of positioning of an AP supine. Your center is going to be at T7. Oh, hold on. Seven, which is eight to ten inches below the jugular notch. Right? 